1 John is a radical book. We talked last week about the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, and we talked about how believers uh, don't understand, some of them, the test of knowing Him. And it's amazing because we, we can see how Christ is perfected in believers, and how do we really know God? And it's by uh, keeping His commandments. And of course, we can't keep the, 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 the commandments of Moses, but we can... We can try to keep or allow the Holy Spirit in us to be perfected. And how do we do this? Well, we talked about that last week. Well, it's the perfected word is the verb. It's a verb and it expresses the idea of maturity and completeness. The love of God is perfected may mean one or two things here. And the believer's love for God grows as he or she keeps God's word. And number two, as the believer pursues fellowship and obedience... God's love for him or her is more fully completed. And so the second is indicated that the believer begins to know by experience that he or she is in him. And because God reveals himself daily in our lives, we know this by the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit works in us. He reveals himself. And so that brings us to the question of are, are, they, are believers really believers? And so the test of knowing him in 1 John chapter 2, we talked about that, how to walk as he, was, as he walked. And it's not about judging others to find out if they really are saved. It's, it's mostly about, you know, a, a <laughs> growth in their life. We can see the Holy Spirit working in people's life by the fruit that they bear. And one of the reasons we fall is because we don't abide in him and the word and the love of God here is referring to God's love for men. It's a godly kind of love. It's a uh, person's love for God in chapter two, the test of knowing him. And so we see that if we abide in him and we're habitually obedient, it's uh Christ, we we begin to rest on Jesus Christ and the obedience by a life method. And so we walk, we become slaves to Jesus and not slaves to sin. And so here we have chapter two of the, the spiritual state. And we begin talking about the anointed last week. And we talked about how when you're anointed by God, you really don't have to, you know, work your way to heaven, so to speak. It comes natural. The Holy Spirit is in us natural. And so as we begin to move on to, uh, you know, verse 18, last week we, we left off on verse 15. Um, let's pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we just pray that you guide this, uh, you know, sermon father for your glory and uh move me out of the way in jesus name amen here we talked about in chapter uh, verse 15 of, of first john chapter 2 we talked about how not to love the world and the things in the world and it says if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him and for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life it's not the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. What's he talking about? Well, number one, he's saying it's easy to get caught up in this wicked system in the world that we live in. Here we have believers out there trying to make it, trying to become somebody and help themselves and it's hard. It's really hard out there, believers. I understand. And so there's deception coming where we go into verse 16, 18 here. And God's saying, and I'm going to touch upon this now. We're, you're going to see what the Holy Spirit does right now. Listen. 18 says, as okay, it says, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that, the Antichrist is coming. Even though, even now, many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out and they might be made manifest 
that none of them were of us. Listen to this. But you have the anointing from the Holy One, you see, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no one, that, that no lie is of the truth. So here it is. You ready? Here's where it comes down to it, the nuts and the bolts. It says that we see the deception, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and we see how believers get caught up, even non-believers, but believers get caught up in the lust of the flesh. You may be thinking, well, what is the lust of the flesh? We're going to get into that. Listen, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You see, the uh, you see Adam and Eve. The, Adam, Eve started. It started with Eve when she was tempted in the garden in Genesis chapter three six, and so Satan tried to lure her away from God's commandments, believers. And it's simple. A lot of people want to party. A lot of people want to get the things that they want to get in their own way. They don't want to commit to Jesus Christ because they've had enough of the deception, whether it's in the church, I'm sorry to say it, or whether it's outside the church, or whether it's at work, or whether it's anywhere. And they get caught up in the drama, and they don't remember that Jesus Christ loves them. And so we see how the devil lures people away through the lust of the flesh, the, sen- the, the sensual pleasure, whether it's making yourself feel good or using others to make yourself get, feel good, whatever it may be, it's a sin and it's, it's, it's the uh, eyes of the lust of the flesh and it's sensual pleasure. And this is what the devil's doing. He's trying to get us away. He's trying to get us away from that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Believers, listen to me. It's true. You may be thinking, man, what did I get myself into? (laughs) No, you got yourself out of it because Satan wants you to be caught up in the world and the things in the world. And so the lust of the eyes is the covetousness, whether it be material, money, Corvettes, whatever that covetousness is, it is what the devil wants you to do to get your eyes off the Lord and his purpose and plan for your life. It's that simple. He's the puzzle, we're his piece. He made a beautiful puzzle and he wants to put us where he wants us, but we have to ask where he wants us. And so it's uh, it's very simple. A lot of pastors, a lot of people, a lot of, you know, they try to make it hard, but it's real simple, man. God's in love with you. Listen, material is the pride, uh, you know, you have the, the lust of the eyes is the covetousness or the material. And pride is about one's position in this life. You see people, they, they work their whole way, all their whole life to get ahead and why they, you know, go to college, which is commendable. But they, they work their way up to this big giant position and they feel like, yeah, you can't knock me down. I'm your boss. <laughs> Don't go to work now and try to... Get, cause problem with your boss. Listen, it's not all, it's not everybody, but it's the Bible here says it's one's position in life. So they, they act like there's something when they get this position. Like you ever see somebody, they're just so lowly and cool and nice, but as they get promoted up the, up the ladder, they continue to go higher. Their attitude changes. And you're like, Hey man, you used to be, you know, on the line over here, you know, peeling oranges or you were doing this or whatever, man. And now you're, I noticed you're changing, you know, I had a problem like that years ago. I was working at the, in an orange juice factory and the guy was, you know, he put me in the peel department and I was peeling oranges and I noticed that, you know, I was peeling faster and, you know, my buddy got promoted and we were cool on the line. We talk all the time. And then eventually he would, you know, he got promoted and promoted and promoted and promoted. And high, the higher he went, the, the meaner he was. <laughs> it was prideful. He didn't want to hang out no more. He thought he was all that. And he 
You know, he really thought that he could, you know, do everything until he fell because pride comes before fall. And that's what happens, believers. We get our eyes off of Jesus, the things that we want and not what he wants, and we fall. And then the last thing is, is they deny Jesus Christ, the Antichrist. You see that right here. It says, the truth abides in you. Therefore, deception of the last hour. Will, here's where it says in verse 18, the uh, Antichrist is coming and... Even now, many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They ride bicycles. They knock on your doors. They pretend to be believers. They, they pretend to be holy. And they wear white shirts. They, you know, they, uh, they're they real nice. They invite you to wards and all this stuff and everything else. But really, they want to take your soul. Wow. Take my soul. Yeah. They don't believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that you have you have to have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're three in one. God is three in one. They don't believe in that. They come in many forms. The Antichrist is here, though. It's talking about in the beast in Revelation. It's talking about. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 13, verse 1 through 18, who will exalt himself above God in Daniel chapter 9, 27, and he'll declare to be God. And he'll be, declared, he'll be wanting to be worshipped by the world in the end. And that's what, that's what we're seeing. It's a setup right now where the enemy's coming in, deceiving the nations. It says it in Matthew. It says it that nation will be rise against nation. And we see how the devil will come up and try to, to uh, manipulate the, the one world. Gov- you'll, have, well, you'll have a one world government rise up. Money will be all currency together. It will be, you know, it's all. And you're thinking, well, that's how it's going to have to happen anyways. No, this is what happens. And then the mark of the beast, the, 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 the forehead, that you're going to have to take that chip and then you're going to go to hell if you take it. It's the mark of the beast. People think I'm crazy, but they're putting chips in people. They're putting chips on them and on their foreheads. You got to be careful. Don't take the mark of the beast. Don't do it. That's the system. That's the, that's the demonic deception last hour system that John is talking about here. And you got to think, man, he's with Jesus. They're kicking it with them. I mean, it's right here, verse by verse. I mean, don't you just love those churches where they don't they don't preach? I mean, you got to preach, man. Pastors, you got to teach. Teach verse by verse. They don't want to hear no smiling face stuff. Oh, what a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Give the word of God, man. It's the way it is, people. Listen. This is where it says you have the anointing in verse 20 from the Holy Spirit. And you know all things that I have not I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that, listen to this, no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus Christ is the Christ. He is an antichrist. So there's a lot of them out there, isn't there? They knock on doors and they, they don't believe that God is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they deny the Son. And it says here that he is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. And whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. And he who know, acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And so let the truth abide in you. And therefore let it abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you. You also will abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. And I think about that because eternity isn't some cologne that you just put on and smell good. It's a radical infinity forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And... Verse in you know in verse twenty six it talks about these things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, 
and is true. This and it's not a lie. And just as he has taught you, you will abide in him. So listen to this. You're you're probably like I'm confused. I don't know what he's saying. What's going on? Jesus Christ promised us eternal salvation. John is writing here saying that if you have the Holy Spirit, that's the promise. If you believe in the Holy Spirit, you'll never burn in hell. You'll never go to hell. If you cry in the name of Jesus and you become a believer and you accept Jesus as your Messiah, repent from your sins and move on in life, you're, you're clean. Satan, ta- Satan tries to condemn you, but there, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Jesus says that I will remove your sins. I will forgive you and bury them in the bottom of the abyss. And I'll never throw them in your face. And I'll, con- I'll convict you, but I won't condemn you. Listen, believers, it's not a hard program. It's really not. Non-believers, it's not a hard program. It's really not. It's a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And Satan wants to keep you from that. And that's why First John talks about staying away from people who don't know the truth. People who are all about money, all about material, all about fame, especially fame. I've been in the industry. It seems like the more films you make, the more you want to feel better about yourself. But is it really about us? No, it's not. Or they play the games on set. We know what's, what's going on. Listen, it's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. And when we die, we're going to face him. And he's going to say, wow. It's very sad. People are being led away by the Antichrist, many of them. They're all over. And they're in your parties. They're in your group of friends. They're everywhere. Well, how do I find them? Well, you'll know them by the fruit that they bear, believers. This message is about not letting Satan lure you away from the calling and the love that Jesus Christ has for you. Here it says in verse 26, these things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him, that's Jesus, abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you because we have the Holy Spirit. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. We need to abide in him and he will abide in us because we're not going to stumble. And if we do stumble, we have a uh, advocate, the Father, to redeem us from our sins. Verse 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And so we see the reward eternal life speaks about quality of life in the present and a life filled with joy of God in the promise of future life of eternity. And it says, verse 29 says, and if now, if you know, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And so we can't continue sinning and Living a life one foot in, one foot out is what he's saying. And he's saying, look out. John's saying, watch out. There's, there's sharks in the water. But you don't got to totally be on panic mode 24-7. But we need to be more loving and more, more, more about Christ and be about his business. We don't want to be legal where uh, a sister's coming up to you all the time You know, because someone said a bad word and they want to condemn you to death. I mean, that's not good either. And so we have to be careful hanging out with legalism because that'll choke you out. It'll make your kids go west of the Mississippi and back through the swamps and they're wondering what happened. I've seen it. I've seen so much legalism in the homes where, oh, my kid can't even play with G.I. Joe. (laughs) Man, he's a real American hero. It's too violent. Okay. Um, that, that was weird. 
Can't watch any uh, Donald Duck uh, uh, cartoons either or any uh, Tom and Jerry because they beat each other too much. I mean, come on. Believers, don't be so hard on your kids. They'll, they'll, I'm telling you, if you're really hard on them and you don't trust them, they're going to take off on you. They're going to come back years later and they're not going to be what you wanted them to be. But the Bible says to raise them up in the way of the God. No, listen, that's true, but you got to, I'm not trying to say habitually sin here. I'm saying don't be so strict on your daughters or on your sons. It will lead them into a cage of, of lions. And I've seen it over and over and over before. Warn them, trust them, but don't be their everything. Don't make your children your life. Make Jesus Christ your life. Because if you do that, then you'll have a better life, believers. I mean, I went to a, I went to a birthday party the other day and I seen a helicopter parent. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, wow. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question? You tell me anything. It's like, don't you try to be my, no, I'm the adult. I'm the one. I, how dare you tell me how to raise my children? I'm like, lady, can I talk to you? Your kid needs to, you know. Oh, <gasps> what? Sin? No, I mean, let, let him make a decision. You know, I don't think he likes purple or pink. Never mind. Whatever it may be. Ease up on the kids. Don't be so worried. Go get some box of games and play them and enjoy life. But leave the kids alone and just teach them. Take them to church. But keep God's word. And you know that how you keep it is, is how we love God. And when we love our brother, we won't live. And, and when we, we love our brothers and sisters, we will live life without stumbling and we see that these chapters of this book when we continue next week and the week on it's you know we're going to talk about that we we are not to love the world and the things of it and we can you know and how we cannot love the world and love god at the same time and we we're seeing this today and this is what john's saying and so we move into the chapter 3, 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. That's, that's the whole trick. It says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed that we shall be. But what we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. What a radical, uh, you know. What a, <laughs> I'm just blown away by the love that Christ has for us believers. And it's the message is so simple. We ruin it because we want to do things our way. and We don't rest in him. But the verse here doesn't say that everybody's righteousness. It just says that since God is righteous and those who practice righteousness will be recognized as being born of God. And so, but the verse doesn't say that everyone is, who is born of God practices righteousness. So believers can walk in darkness and, and in sin. And basically, uh, we got to be careful because the sin described in this verse is not occasional sin, but it's constant lifestyle of habitual rebelling against God. And so you can keep going on and on and on and on and on. And eventually, that's the deadly sin. You play with sin, you get burned. God is merciful. Believers, listen. If you're listening to this sermon right now and you're thinking, man, I'm done. I'm, I've done so much. God's saying, no, there's hope. There is hope till there's the last breath. God says, I will save you. I will, I will, I will love you and, and forgive you and you will be a new person in me. But this, this is talking about don't, don't blow it, man. Don't habitually sin against Jesus Christ in your body. Listen, God loves you. Don't enjoy the, the, the world. Don't enjoy the, don't enjoy the deceit. Don't, don't be careful. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it has a consequence. And Satan can lure you away, believers, if you're not careful. And, and, 
Don't get caught up in it. Because the Antichrist is trying to deceive us. He doesn't want us to have that personal happiness, that joy, that endless love that God has. for. He doesn't want us to experience that. And he does it by hurting your finances. He allows it. God allows it. I mean, and but Satan tries to, you know, he tries to make war with us. And we got to put on our armor of God, believers. We have to stand fast. We have to put on that breast breast uh, plate of righteousness and, you know, the helmet of salvation, man. We got to get get on fire for the Lord, believers, because we are living in the last days. And it's it's amazing what God's doing. We're in God's family. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. God loves us. He, you know, the greater amazement and appreciation is for the fact that God's love is expressed to human beings and that Christians are included in this family. And God loves all believers, the weak as well as the strong. And so John here is describing believers that Jesus, on the night of the betrayal, as having loved his own, who are in the world, and he writes that he loved them to the end. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this chapter, Lord. And Lord, you do love us. And we know that you love us, Father. And we know that the devil's trying to, uh, you know, cause some of us to go back to our old nature. And so now we ask that you uh, help the ones that don't know you, Father. And we pray that the ones that do know you, if they're struggling, we pray that you re- restore them, Father. Restore them to this sermon that they're going to be all right, that, that it's okay. We make mistakes and it's okay. So we pray that you fix those mistakes, Father. We ask that you unlock that mercy and grace that you've given us to those who ask right now, Father. Um, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And listen, believers out there, don't worry about nothing, man. God is, if the Lord's for you, who can be against you? Or what can be against you? And so next week, we're going to get into chapter 3 a bit, a little bit deeper. And we're going to talk about the sin and the child of God. And we're going to get into the imperative of love and the outworking of love. Because that's my favorite one. We're going to talk about loving other believers and how it's a fundamental requirement of Christ, of the Christian life. And we are going to talk about a failure to love others. Christians raises serious questions about our genuineness of our faith. <laughs> and... We're going to talk about the genuine love, how it always results in action, and it's not words. And so God is the source of all love, and mature love does not produce fear, but instead it imparts courage. And so we believers are strong. We're going to stay strong. We're going to continue to praise Him, worship Him, and love Him. And we're going to talk about that outworking love next week. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to uh, explain the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And... uh, God bless you guys this week and may the Lord bless you guys.